All right, session four, uh, week two. <clears throat> last week, oh. last week we talked about the arrays method or the array built-in methods, um, and there are a lot of them. We don't expect you to memorize absolutely everyone. We just want to know that hey, there are these built-in functions that you can perform on arrays that perform specific actions on those arrays. So like push adds an element to the end of the array, pop removes an element from the end of the array, you know, unshift, shift, slice, splice, index of, there's last index of. These aren't all of them, these are just some of them, some of the more common ones that you may see. And we encourage you to leverage these to help solve some of these challenges, to help you make your life easier. Um, we don't, as I mentioned, we don't expect you to memorize them all. Uh, but just know that there are just tools in your tool belt to help you solve challenges. Okay. All right. So with yesterday or last or on Tuesday, we covered arrays. Today we're going to cover objects. And can anybody tell me what an object is and how it is constructed? I would say. Like what's unique about an object versus like a, an array? So an array would be basic. It's an array is basically a list. An object is a list of value pairs or properties. Um, yeah. Yep. So it's like key value pairs. So I wouldn't say it's a mm -hmm. list. Well, you can kind of say it's a list of key values. Um, so yes, it's like there's a key and then there's the, the value of that key. Uh, <clears throat> think of it like a dictionary. They're also like objects are also known as dictionaries in other languages. Same thing. Uh, uh, think of a dictionary, you open up your dictionary. It says, okay, the definition of the word keyboard is what a device generally attached to, you know, whatever a computer or also no, or also can be an instrument, et cetera. So that's like the value of the word keyboard. And with ob just like with arrays, objects have built-in methods attached to them uh, that you can perform specific actions on. Now, they're not as, there aren't as many uh, as arrays, but they're good to know. Oh, that, this is not correct. Let me just, whoops. So it is, Object, turns of keys, values, and entries. <clears throat> so these are some that you'll, you can leverage to perform specific actions on an object uh, to help you solve some problems. <clears throat> Up here, there's a link to MDN, which is a list of all the different kinds of built-in methods on objects. So we have object.entries, which is one, object.keys, uh, object.values. I've seen people use uh, get own property names. <clears throat> so those are objects. These are, these are what they're called object.assign, object.create, but they're a little, they're constructed a little bit different or they're used a little bit different than the built-in methods for arrays. <clears throat> so here, um, objects. So for example, like with an array, we can say let array of names equals, uh, Tom, Noah, uh, Merrill. Please zoom in. Oh, thank you. Oh. Thank you. That's good. All right. Merrill and Gus. <clears throat> Where built in arrays, you'll invoke the, or you'll call the array. So, array of name, let's call it names. And then you'll do like push off of that array and grab, like push in, uh, you know, Ellie or something like that. 
And so you'd call the array dot push. Uh, so the name of the, the array followed by dot and then the name of the uh, built-in method. Where objects, it's a little bit different. So objects, we can create an object. So I've got an object, employee one, followed by the curly bra brackets, an open curly bracket, a brace, followed by name, Tom, title, instructor, employer, code platoon, age 86, closing bracket. So, <clears throat> So that, so for example, let's do keys. So object.keys returns an array of object keys. So if I just console log, where before I do like array dot push, whatever, here I'm actually calling the object capital O, which is the object uh, object essentially like the object class of JavaScript dot keys, and then I pass in the object. So employee one. And if I run that, it returns, so example, the object keys returns an array of object keys. So object dot keys, I'm passing in the object, it returns an array of object keys, name, title, employer, age. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions about the object keys built-in method and what it returns? So I can even access, see if this works. Yep, so I can actually, this entire thing, object.keys, I'm passing in employee one, returns an object. The value of this is an, or returns an array. So the value of this is an array. So I can actually start accessing the index of that array. So the index at zero in this array, which is literally just an array of key ob keys from this object. If I access index zero, corresponds to name, if I run it, there's name. I can do it to, you know, three, zero, one, two, three, should return the age right there. <clears throat> Does that kind of make sense? So yes. That's object. Uh, keys and let's go up here object that get own property name returns an array of object keys okay so wait a second this first one and this second one return the same thing let's look at this for a second so I'm gonna just do that and I'm gonna copy this one down It says has, what is it? Has own property name. Is that what it says? Has own property name. So if I do object dot has, oh, see, like I'm already typing it in and the current or my IDE REPL already knows, hey, this object has a, pro has a, a method called has own property name on it. So I can just click enter and it'll automatically fill it in for me. So if I console log that, uh oh, object has, is that what it is? It's good. Oh, thank you. Get own property name. What's going on here? Oh, is it plural? Is 
think it's plural. Get own property names. There we go. So <clears throat> it returns the same thing as keys. So, so what's the actual difference here? Does anybody know? Um, well, it looks like the first one was just only returning, you know, based on the index or, or anything or something like that, right? Whereas cool. the new code pulls all the, uh, the keys. Well, I was grabbing the individual index by gra pressing, like grabbing the index zero, the value at index zero of this array. Oh, okay. So they're pretty much the same thing. There's some minute differences. So if we actually look at it, let's go into the documentation. It's always great looking at documentation. So meth get own property names, returns an array of all properties, including non enumerable properties, except for those with those that which use symbol. Don't know what that means. Found directly in a given object. So now let's go to keys. It says returns an array objects, given objects own innumerable property names. So let's just go down here. Does it have any specific has own property? I'm just kind of see if it has any differences. So I think we can include don't enumerate string. So this is what it actually, what it looks like. So I'm gonna come up here. Do we include enumerate? So let's see what this looks like. So we can actually say like, what's, What's the difference between get own property right here? And if, if I include a specific, I just wanna see if I can get this off the bat, where to go. So in this one, if I include enumerable, The hell? False. I just want to run this and see what it does. Yeah, it still works. But let's see what it actually. So Stack Overflow is a really good place if you if you're experiment uh, experiencing uh, errors or anything like that. Okay, so it looks like in let's see. So there's a little difference, get own properties names, A returns all properties of the object, where object keys returns all enumerable own properties, it means that if you define your object properties without making some of them enumerable equals false, these two met methods will give you the same result. So we can just test this, define properties, oh, is it enumerable? Through. Let's see if this returns. Why is that working? All right. All right, I'll, I'll flush this one out. Why? Let's actually just copy this code. I'm going to go over here and comment that out. Put, put this in here. So define properties, you're actually able to, okay. Oh, wait, why did that not work? Hmm. Oh, do I need the value? Sorry, hold on. Value 86. Thank you for staying with me here while I debug this. Uh oh, employee one. Let's 
Still not working. Okay, disregard that. So anyways, these two essentially return the same thing. Um, you can either, you can use either or, but generally speaking, use get own property names. There very rarely will actually be a property of, of enumerable on it. So more often than not, these will return always 99.9% .9 of the time, return the same, uh, same values. Uh, just know that there is a very subtle difference in them and how they, uh, how they work. <clears throat> and then we have object.values, which just like object.keys returns whoop, console log object capital O dot values and we pass in the actual employee, the actual name of the object, which is up here, employee one, and run it and it returns an array. So I'm gonna comment this one out. So where get own property names returns the key of each and every key in the, in the object, object.values returns the actual value in the object. So it returns an array of values. Does anybody have any questions about object.values, object.keys, object.has own property name? All right, so let's go over the last one. <clears throat> object.entries returns an array of key value of the object when iterating through it. So there's a couple of ways, just like we do with for loops. Oh, where'd it go? So in, there's just like with, when we're looping through an array, we can do like for let i equals zero, i is less than array of names dot length. Then we increase the index each time and we console log print out employee the value at that index, not employee one, uh, array of names. So I'm looping through this array of names and now I'm printing the value at that given index, starting at index zero, goes through it once, prints out the name. I can say like, I can use string interpolation or I can say hi and then surround whatever variable I want with curly braces and then put a dollar sign uh, right before the opening curly brace. If I run that, oh, what's going on? I'm gonna just do a hard refresh. Oh, what happened? Array of names. It deleted your dollar sign. Oh, thank you. So it's, there we go. Hi, Tom, Noah, Merrill, Gus, and Kelly. Oh, cancel. Run that again. So it's looping through. That's how you loop through an array. But if I wanted to loop through an object similar to that, how I just did it with an array, there's a couple of ways we can do that. So um, looping through an array. <clears throat> so I can say uh, looping through 
an object. So when looping through an object, instead of like the for let i equals zero, we can literally just say for let the, the key in the object, key in object, and this is the name of that object. So, uh, so this object name is called employee one. So for key, or so let the key in the employee object, I can print, not print, not Python, console log, the key. So if I run that, Uh-oh, see right here it says <laughs> reference error key KE is not defined. Missing a lot. <laughs> yep, so it says exactly where is it, where is it broken at? It says at home runner July 16th. That's actually the name of this REPL at the index.js file. If I look over to the left, upper left, it says this is, I'm inside this index.js file. Line 30, uh, space like 15, keystrokes over. So line 30, 15 over, here it is. So if I run that, I got the name, title, employer, age. It's associated with the keys, name, title, employer, age. Now if I wanted to access the values at those keys, I can call the employee and open brackets, closing brackets, surrounding the key name, I can run that and it should work. Uh-oh, employee, employee one, which is the name of the object. So I've got name, Tom, title. Uh, so yeah, so it's name, the value is Tom, the key is title, the value is instructor, employer is code platoon, or employer, yes, yeah, cold platoon, age is 89. So I've seen people do dot notation. Let's look at what dot notation looks like. Undefined, undefined, undefined. You can't do dot notation when you're passing in a variable on it. So if I did dot age, let's see what this looks like. There, 89, 89, 89. So this is literally the dot the name of the specific key, but the only way, so if you're passing in a variable set like the key, you have to do bracket notation. So employee one bracket, I can pass in a variable in here, name key, and it should print off the values at that key. Does anybody have any questions about looping through an object? Question, Tom. Yep. If for that uh, console.log key, if you put return key, will that uh, will that work? So, like instead of console.log? <laughs> yes, sir. It needs a function, though. Uh, yeah. So right now I'm not in, inside of a function. Uh, so I have to put this inside of a function. So I can say... Uh, let get employee data equals, you know, I'm going to pass in uh, uh, some object and so I can pass, bring that up here. So if I just return, so I just return the key, what's going to happen is it's going to, so a function is just a set of instructions that execute and stop executing when there's essentially a return statement or until like, yeah, memory gets built up and it collapses. So since this return statement is within this for loop, it's going to go for let key an object. So for let name an employee one object. I can actually pass this in here. 
So when key in some object, I'm gonna console log the key and then I'm gonna console log the value and then I'm just gonna return the key and then the function's just gonna stop right there. It's not gonna go back through that for loop. So, if, um, yep. go ahead. I meant if you de delete the console.log line, so delete 31 and 32, would it only return the first, it would only return the first, uh, correct? Yep, it would only return that first key. So if I run it, there it goes, name. Okay. So yeah, the return statement is when you want the function to stop executing altogether. Hey, Tom, uh, what if you wanted to get uh, two values of that object um, only, not the entire uh, list of values from the keys? Uh, it depends on what you'd want to be doing with that. Um, so this will loop through it until it reaches the end. There's no like specific uh, method or way to just immediately stop executing it. Um, in this for loop until you'd have to add in some other type of logic in here. So it'd be like uh, stop at, so you'd have to be like, what's, what value do you want it to stop at? So if you wanted it to stop at employer, so you could say like if uh, some object at, key equals stop at variable like return or something like that key and then some object so if i run this ideally it was, should only print the name the tom title instructor and then stop executing at that point. Actually, it would be like that. So if I run it, instructor, oh yeah, so it would still, I'd have to move this down here if I just wanted to display the first two. So you'd have to explicitly, explicitly tell that the function when you want it to stop. Does that kind of answer your question? So there isn't like a special way to like break out of it. Yeah, that, that does, thank you. You could also, I guess, um, please tell me if I'm wrong, but you could also just put an if statement that if like, if the key equals what you're looking for, console log it, so it only console logs what you want to see. Right, you can definitely do that as well. Essentially like okay. it's the opposite of what this is. So if key does not equal stop at, but it's still loop, it still like loops through everything. Um, so it's, it would still technically go through every single one, but it just wouldn't print it off to the screen. Oop. So it prints it off every single one of them that's not employer the way I had it actually like stopped executing the for loop. But yeah. So this is one way to loop through an object. So I'm gonna just kind of let that out. And there is another one with, it's pretty much the same thing but with this object.entries. So returns an array of key values of the object when iterating through it. So I'm gonna delete this. So I can do for, I can say let, and then inside of an array, type the key, just the keyword key value. Now these aren't reserved keywords. You can just say like K, and V or so like you can literally name it anything like whatever. 
and something else. So it doesn't have to be key value, but you want to name things to what they're actually referencing in your code. So this first value is key, second value, or the second uh, thing is the value. And then you could say it, of object dot entries and invoke it. And now I can console log and do uh, the key followed by the value. If I run that, hopefully I don't get any errors. Come on. I'm gonna refresh REPL because it's being annoying. So if I run that, Oh, cannot convert under nine or null to object anonymous. Oh, I'm sorry. So I did object. So cannot convert undefined of or null to an object. So I didn't pass in the actual sum object into this value. So it didn't have anything like anything to look at to grab the, the entries for in this object. So if I run that again, I think it also deleted some of your code on line 43. Oh, thank you. Values. So if I run that, oh, so I'm getting another error because rep values is not defined at index 4328 and come down here to index or line 43. If I literally count over 28 spaces, it'll say, oh, here's that values that's undefined. And that means that throughout this entire application, I never defined this value anywhere else in the program. So it doesn't know what this is. So, and that's the error. It's not, it shouldn't be values, it should be value. So I can get rid of that S and run that. And there it goes, t name, Tom, title, instructor. So that's another way we can loop through an object relatively the same except where it's up here it's for key in object this is like let array open bracket followed by key comma value closing bracket of the object dot entries and now i can access the key value in there does anybody have any questions about looping through an object question the uh, the first one seems a lot more simpler is there any time <laughs> you recommend ever using object that entries i've only used this one this is what i default to because yeah. i actually didn't don't have this one memorized i was like oh I, I know there is a way to do it but when i'm writing code i'm like well i know i know this way i just like know this way off the top of my head i'd have to google this one to be like double check uh, oh okay how does entries work oh i have to do this so it okay. just depends on what you memorize. Um, I just knew this like, kind of off the top of my head. Um, for the one you have highlighted, is why is there nothing after return? Is it just, or I don't just, I just didn't want to have this. So when you return something, if you just type in return, that just executes the, the program or the, this function. And it literally doesn't, it doesn't return anything to the computer. It doesn't return anything. Generally, you want always want to return something like okay. um, null or like something. Oh. But you could definitely do like return. It's, it's not good practice just to do like a return statement. Yeah, so it's like I said, it's not good practice just to do this. But people do it. All right. Anybody else have any questions? All right, let's see something. So, 
let's just run through. I'm going to bring in some data. So this is a big piece of data right here. <clears throat> and let's see what I want. Like, so if I look at this, this is, I'm declaring a variable named company. What kind of data type is this? An array of objects. An array of objects. So I've got this open bracket right here. So that indicates an, it's an array and I've got, whoop, Oh, good. So here's an open bracket. And if I go down here, so this it's an object. And then I come down here to employees and it looks like employees is also an array of objects. So if I come down here, this is the very first value at index zero in this array. And then I have another index. So index one, I have another company with employees data. So if I wanted to loop through this and what do I want to grab? I want to grab how many male and female employees these two companies have. Uh, let's make this one male. So I've got this data and I want to return. Uh, so I want to return. So taking in an, ar an array of objects of company and employee data, I want to return, uh, what do I want to return? Uh, the count or how many males and females are in each company. So what data structure do I want to return? I'm just kind of coming up with this on the fly. I want to return an array of objects. So let output equals an array. And I want the key in the first array to be the, the company name. So gem bucket, and I want the value to be an object of male and like the count. So like one and female to be two. Let's do something like that or actually It's probably going to be too take kind of a long time to do. <clears throat> so yeah, I just want to return the number of employees or the, the number of female and male employees in this entire list of objects. So I can say uh, I'm going to write a method called let get uh, gender. It takes in an object and I need to do something. <clears throat> so the first thing I need to do, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to loop through this. And uh, we have objects, employee date, return how many males and females are total. And an object that looks like Males, uh, like two, females, like three or whatever, something like that. So I'm going to probably let uh, males equals 
zero, let females equal zero, and then I'm going to loop through. So for let i equals zero, i is less than object dot length i plus plus. So I'm literally just looping through this object initially. I know there's only two values, but in theory, I can grab a data from like the entire S&P 500 or something like that. So I want to console log uh, console log object at index i and I'm going to just console log that right now just to see what that data looks like. So if I run this, whoa, okay. So here's that first one and here's that second one that it loops through. So I can like console log right there just to kind of show you where it splits at. Uh, yeah, I'm going to clear it and run it again. So it comes in here, right? That's the first one. So now I can grab, I need the employees, right? So now I need to get, grab the value. So this right here is an object. So now, now I need to grab the, the employee or the value of employee at that keyword. So I can actually even do employees and let's run that and see what that data looks like. I'm just slowly narrowing down uh, where the data exists. So now I've got an array of employees right here. So now I've got this first for loop and this is an array so in theory, I can do another for loop and loop through this other array. So I can do what is called a nested for loop. So another for loop. And when, whenever you do nested for loops, so now I'm gonna do let, instead of using the keyword I, I'm gonna use the keyword J. So J equals zero. J is less than the length of this, employees array. So the length is less than this right here. And this is an array of one, two, three. So dot length, I, not I, so J plus plus. Does anybody have any questions of how I'm narrowing down and, and doing a nested for loop right now and accessing this data within the employee? or the company object or the company array. You had to do that because you went from array array into an object, right? So you couldn't add um, kind of another bracket next to employees in the- so Right here? Of, yeah, so because you went from employees, so you look mm -hmm. through uh, the object and then you look through employees, but then employees turns into an object. So that's why you have to break it up into a for loop, right? <clears throat> well, Initially, this is an array. So I'm looping through this the first array right here. And now I got to get to uh, this employees array to loop through that. So right now I'm not actually looping through an object yet. I'm actually not looping through an object. I'm looping through two arrays at the moment. Okay. But in order to access this inner array, I have to first at the first in the first for loop, I mean inside of here. So it's going to iterate through this thing. And then in the second for loop, I'm going to be within this area. And now I can iterate through here. So I'm going to be like at this object, at this object, at this object um, in the array in this, the nested array. So now I can console log object at index i dot employees 
and then at index J. And so now I want to try to get to here and test whether or not this person is a male or female. So let's just console log that and see if everything works as expected. Oh, kind of refresh. I clear the screen. Oh man, it didn't do it. So console log. Grab an employee I and then employees and then the value at that index. So if I run that, here I got each individual employee now, all right here. So now I can say, all right, gender uh, at each individual employee. Let's run that again. Come on. Does it, uh, does Ripple add it to the already existing thing on the screen? So like you all the way at the bottom? Or no, see, so yeah, it's, I can tell it's still running because it says. Oh, okay. okay. Stop. So here we go. So where, why is it printing that? Oh, yep. If I run that again, I get female, male, male, female. Cool. So now I can do, just do some conditional statements. I can say let gender, I'm gonna assign this entire obnoxious thing to a variable. So I only have to do it once. And now I can say if gender equals female, Uh, females plus equals, I can just do plus plus. Else, if I'm gonna do an else if, uh, gender equals male, then fe uh, males plus plus. And I just want to console after, so it's going to loop through everything. And at the, once it breaks out of that for loop, I want to console log the males and the females. I just want to see if this is going to work. So three and three, uh, if I do female, run that, it's just so it's different, two and four. So I've got the answer now. Now I just want to return an object of males and females like that. So I can actually literally return. I can create an object like that. Uh, males colon males. That's the value right here. And then females. Uh, females. And now if I return that, if I clear the screen and run that, I got males two, females four. What questions do you have about looping through an array of objects and grabbing all that data? I know it looks kind of messy. I kind of came up with this one on the fly because it's a lot of nested data. Someone have a question? Um, oh. Awesome. Females plus plus. Yep. So what does that do? So this is a shorthand to add one to the already existing uh, variable. Oh, it's, 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 it's a count then. Yep, it's, yeah, it's counting oh, okay. up, yeah. Okay. And it only counts up by one. So okay. it's the same as, it's, it's the exactly same syntax. If I do females equals the current value of females plus one. That's doing this same thing, line 112 of males and right here is doing the same thing. It's just a shorthand to count up by one. Thank you. You're welcome.
So if I run that again, just to make sure, uh-oh, Famals. So if I run that again, same answer. All right. I'm going 